chapter 7, we're going to look at arrays and later references. You've seen strings being looped over and us looking at different characters as we loop through. And we're going to do something similar, except an array, somewhat like a string, but an array holds uh, lots of one type of element. And we're going to make an integer array first, and a double array works the exact same, except it contains doubles. And when you declare an array right here, you have these square brackets. So that's the first thing to notice. And I created a new project called Chapter 7 Code. Let's get that projects out of the way. All right, so we can declare an array right here. And that's not going to do much if I run it, because we haven't put anything in there, and we don't have any print statements. So let's go ahead and grab this second line. So this first line here, this declares an integer array called counts. And then on the next line, we're going to make a new, what this does, it's going to make a new integer array of size four. So that's super important, the size. So it's going to reserve in memory four uh, locations for integers. You can put any positive integer value you want here. You might be able to do it with zero, although it's kind of silly because you just created something that can store nothing. Uh, it will let you run it with zero, but that just means you can store zero things in it. So we'll just go with four here. Uh, you can also create an array in one line if you know what you want to fill it with. And we'll do that right down there. This will be an integer array, and it's going to be filled up with one, two, three, and four. Okay, so that's how to create one. Now, of course, we want to use it. So that's 7.2. This is a very good visual uh, description of what an array is. We've created a new array of size 4, so automatically it's going to have four things in it. And a good way to think about it is a comma-separated list. Now, the reason there's going to be zeros in it is because the default value for integers is zero. So it's kind of like a string of length four, where you would have four uh, characters in it if you use char at. Now we have four integers in here, and we can individually change the value of any one that we want. So let's go ahead and use this print statement here. And. Let's not run that one anymore. Okay. So it says the zeroth element is zero. Uh, we're about to look at some other elements, so let's use an int index, and we'll just do our index is zero. what I did is we're going to just print out this count with a square bracket and then the, whatever value index has will be printed and it's going to close with a square bracket and then it's going to concatenate or attach the actual value in the index position and we're going to run this now so it tells us count at position 0 is 0 so let's make count less boring let's put 1 2 3 4 in it Four and I believe you actually have to do this on the first line here. I want to do it in two lines. Maybe we do new. Ah, nope. Okay, we'll just do this all in one line for now. We'll be doing a lot of playing around with individual values uh, using for loops very soon. I just don't want to loop right now. All right, so let me rearrange this. So one, four, six, fourteen.
All right, now when I run it, we'll see position zero has the value one. Now I can change index to uh, position one. Now remember, we're starting at index zero, just like strings. So position one, we have four. And position three, we should have 14. All right, let's get crazy. Position four. Well, index four, out of bounds. You're going to see that pretty frequently. Uh, and it will tell you the length is four. But remember, your index can only go up to length minus one. You also have a problem if you do any negative values, you'll get index negative one out of bounds. So that's how to get some index out of bounds. You can change values inside of counts. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll go to position one, which is the value of four. And we'll do counts zero equals counts one. Switch this around. Counts one equals count zero. So that means the value at count zero, which is one, is going to be uh, put into counts at position one. So that seems a little weird, but at position one, we now have a one because what we did is we took the element at zero and set it to be the element at one. That's probably maybe a little too confusing. Let's do something a bit easier. Let's do counts one plus plus. All right, just like the, uh, the book says here. All right, so look at that. It did counts at position one. It added one to it, and then we printed it out. We can also do the uh, plus equals uh, maybe 70. Run that. We just put 74 into here. Uh, of course, you can do any operations you want. So now we're about to loop. So I could grab, well, this is a pretty good loop right here. I'm going to cancel out that for loop. Paste in this one. All right, now we do have four elements in here, but let's get smart right from the beginning. I'm going to do counts dot. Um, oh, come on, please wait. I believe it's length. I guess wrong. Size. What am I waiting for? Why don't you just tell me that length? All right, there we go. All right, so it's not a method, just counts.length. All right, so what this is going to do is going to run through and print out all the values, and we're going to format them and make them look pretty uh, in the next section.